thank you very much, David. Um, the work I will present today is work in progress, and it's also a community study. So all the mycologists that you see listed here will be involved and contribute new data. Um, this is Pesaisa vesiculosa, which is the type of the genus Pesaisa and of the class. The citromycetes are characterized by acai that open with a small lid-like structure, the operculum. Um, it's also the earliest diverging lineage within the Pesitomycotina together with Obeliomycetes. As Joey Spatafora showed yesterday, this is now supported by uh, genomes. The ascomata are apothecia or are closed structures of apothecia such as in the truffle or truffle-like forms. Um, it, the group is very diverse uh, uh, in morphology, both in shape and colors, and they range in size from less than half a millimeter and up to 30 centimeter. The smallest Pesitomycetes is just a single ascus, uh, uh, a species in the genus Elota ascus. Uh, asexual morphs has been reported in the class and described in several form genera, but overall the knowledge about the asexual morph is very limited. And many, in many species the spores do not germinate in culture. And most of the data I will show today are sequences that are derived from DNA that are extracted from apothecia. Um, but tomorrow Rosanne Healy will uh, tell us more about her recent studies of spore mats of ectomycorrhizal pesacellus, um, and that's those as you see here on the photographs. Uh, before I get into the main topic of today, I want to give you a short overview of the importance of this class. So, of course, as an early divergent lineage, it's very important for understanding character evolution within Pesitomycotina, and also Recently, um, the biological activity and role of these fungi in ecosystems uh, have been shown to be much more diverse and important than previously thought. The greatest diversity of species occur in temperate regions or at high elevations. Most species produce apothecia on soil, but many are substrate specialists with those on dung and burnt ground as a dominating. They occur on um, plant debris where animals have urinated on wood and leaves and a special group are the Brio symbiotic that occurs on, on mosses, uh, most commonly on small acrocarpious mosses. Um, until recently, most of the species that produce apothecia epigeously were thought to be subtropic, but an increasing number of studies using sequences uh, from um, uh, environmental sampling or root tips and morphotyping have shown that these are uh, ectomycorrhizal symbiotic. And surprisingly, um, Pesitomycetes have now also been found as foliar uh, endophytes and endolichenic fungi. And in this study, um, using sequences from apothecia that were identified to species within the Pinemataceae and sequences from cultures of foliar endophytes and endolichenic fungi, we were able to identify most of these two species or genus. Um, I know you cannot see any of the names here, but what you should know is, note is that the, the green names are foliar endophytes and the blue are endolichenic. So you can see they are distributed throughout the family and they are distinct from those that are ectomycorrhizal. That's those that are in black bold and also some newly um, discovered uh, in this study are in red. Uh, in this study, um, focusing on the largest family, Pinemataceae, we traced the evolution of trophic strategies known in the class. So what you can see here is that um, the ancestor of the class and the deeper branches were, um, are reconstructed to be uh, saprobic or most likely subprobic, that's the brown circles. The red circles are those that are reconstructed as ectomycorrhizae. So ectomycorrhizae has arisen within uh, all the major uh, 
all these major groups and likely seven to eight times independently within Pinometaceae centrolato. Um, and these are just some photos to show uh, some of these newly discovered ectomycorrhizae. So Humaria, Genia, Otidia, and Tarsetta have been shown to be ectomycorrhizal. Um, an obligate bryosymbiotic lifestyle has arisen only twice within the class. In the uh, Octospora lineage, which is highly specious with about 150 species, and in one species in Chylomania, Chylomania sleotiorum. Um, these are considered to be uh, uh, making pars uh, parasitizing the rich soils. Recently, uh, a severe pathogen Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, recently, a severe pathogen was discovered to be a member of the Pisitomycetes Fimatocicopsis uh, omnivora, or also called root rot pathogen. It's uh, only known as an asexual metosport morph, and for a long time it was thought to be various species of Pisitomycetes. But here we use multiple uh, sequences to show that it's uh, a member of the Ritinaceae. Uh, and it's causing severe damages to crops throughout its range, and it's capable of infecting more than 2,000 species of decords. Um, so within the class, there are about 1,700 currently accepted species, 184 genera, 15 families, but only a single order, the Pisacelis. So. Uh, the goal of this study is to produce uh, phylogeny of the class to be able to define orders that, more, uh, that better reflect the phylogenetic re relationships among the families. And um, I've listed some questions that I think we should also discuss, the taxon sampling and selected gene regions. And also I think we should think about uh, when does a single branch justify or represent a new genus or family? Is there an inflation of monotypic genera in the class? Um, to uh, robustly resolve uh, the deeper branches in the class, uh, Xianghua Wang and I compiled uh, multiple genes, uh, multiple sequences um, uh, from these studies that I have listed down in the corner, uh, with the aim of getting a, a combined data set of these four gene regions. So this uh, skeleton tree you see here includes 167 species, 81 genera, which is about half of the known genera, and all families except one. I will get back, back to that one later. And uh, as you can see, three main lineages were resolved, A, B, and C, and confirming recent results uh, the pinematase uh, node for pinematase essential structure was highly resolved. And the 10 lineages within that family uh, shown in green were also highly supported. One additional lineage was added, the Alorina lineage. The lineages you see in red are members of pinematase that we have excluded from the family because they were more closely related to the Ascodesmidaceae and Glacialaceae. This data set still includes a lot of missing data. So what we will aim for in the study is to try to fill out the gaps and also add uh, critical taxa to try to get better support. Right, so the one family that we have not, or actually I should say that uh, we got the same topology um, with this restricted number of species and we still have all the genera included um, but the support value was slightly lowered for some of the deeper branches. For example, the B clade, the value, support value went now below 70%. The one family that we didn't sample uh, or include here was the Castanelaceae because of missing data. But using a large subunit and a small subunit of the ribosomal DNA, it has been shown to be an independent lineage within this larger clade of B and C. It's a peculiar, uh, it's a monotypic family with a monotypic uh, genus, Castanella venalis, and 
Uh, it's a peculiar fungus. It produces these very tiny apothecia that are born on a very thin subiculum, so uh, on soil. So it looks almost more like a resupinate basidium acid. And it's only known from the type locality in Finland and one collection from New Mexico. But I think it's simply overlooked. It has uh, two or multiple nuclei in the spores, which supports its placement in the bee uh, lineage. Uh, I'm very sorry about this trees. Uh, it's not possible to connect my computer. No. OK. Um, the Ritzinase and Calisophase are highly supported as a monophyletic group in, in this study. And that's interesting because both of these families include uh, plant parasitic species. Uh, only one other plant parasitic species is known in the Sarcosomatase, and that's Urnula criterium in the C lineage. Calisophase was recently described as a monotypic family from monotypic genus uh, Calocypha. But uh, recently, a forgotten Calocypha species uh, was recollected. It uh, was described from North Africa, and it has now been found in Italy and Spain. And it was then described as a new genus, Calistoscypha, based on ribosomal DNA, differences in pigment, <coughs> and as opposed, supposed associations with eucalypt eucalyptus. Uh, Calocypha is uh, a temperate alpine species, and its uh, uh, anamorph is pathogenic on conifer seeds. In earlier work, the Pesacelles were uh, segregated based on ASCO structure. So Legal, she segregated two groups, uh, uh, those with thin-walled assay with terminal opercula, and those with thick-walled assay with thick and often eccentric opercula. And this latter group she recognized as the subopercolate discomycetes. Um, Refi later um, recognized uh, the sarco, uh, this group as a sarcosyphenae, uh, a suborder, and the rest of the order in the suborder pesacinae. Here, including uh, protein coding genes, the sarcosyphenae is highly supported as a monophyletic group. And it's also supported by several morphological characters. And apart from, from those that Rifa already uh, noted, um, this group is uh, supported by spores with nul multiple nuclei and a special type of pore plug. Uh, Kimbro added a third suborder to the class, the Pionomenae, um, for highly reduced uh, apothecial forms. So for species, uh, for genera such as Ascodesmis, Alutoascus, and Pyronema. And that's those in green. And so um, clearly, based on molecular data, this suborder is polyphyletic. There are some morphological characters that support the, uh, these three lineages. Uh, a close relationship between the Ascobalase and Pesacese is supported by an amyloid reaction of the assay, which is absent from the rest of the families. However, the A clade is not uh, supported um, with these data, and based on Bayesian analysis, these two families are uh, supported as successive sister species, with the Pesacese being the most basal. Uh, the number of nuclei in the spores have been found to be a fairly constant character for the families. And so I mapped here um, with colors for the families the number of nuclei. So you can see that the A clade has one nuclei in the spores, and it's also present in um, most of the C lineage. Uh, but also in the calocyphase that are nested in the B clade. Otherwise, the B clade has two to multiple nuclei, and multiple nuclei is also found in the Sarcosalphinae. There are exceptions um, to these numbers, and a genus was recently described, Octosporopsis, which is shown here with two nuclei in the spores, 
and it's um, shown to be closely related to members uh, in the Pinometaceae, uh, the Octospora lineage, so those moss parasites. Uh, ASCO septal uh, poor ultrastructure support um, the higher level relationships to a certain degree. And this is work by Kimbrough and co workers that he summarized in um, the first international work uh, ASCO workshop in 1994, published it. And I have marked here also with colors uh, the families, the different types of septal poor plug. The most simple type is find, found in the Pisaceae uh, with these convex and biconvex thin bands. In Ascobalaceae, the pore plug is more elaborate but still different from the rest of the uh, order. In the B lineage, uh, those species that have been studied, they have identical type of pore plugs. These dome or cone shaped plugs with V shaped striations. Uh, the same is the case for the Sarcosaphine. It also has a special uh, pore plug with V-shaped striations. But when we get into the Pinematase uh, sensulator, uh, where the situation is more complicated, the pore plug are also more variable. There are other characters that support uh, these groups, such as exibulum structure, um, um, Exibulum hairs, presence or absence of, of exibulum hairs and carotenoids. And in this study, we uh, trace the evolution of the production of carotenoids. So what you can see here is that um, the ancestors of the class and the A, B, and C lineages did most likely not produce carotenoids, which then evolved um, at least four times uh, within the class in distantly related uh, taxa. But most of those species that produce carotenoids are the Sarcosyphaceae and then um, in the Pinematase, where the Pinematase sensu stricto, the ancestor, uh, was reconstructed to produce carotenoids. This, uh, the production of carotenoids has then subsequently been lost in the family. Um, Rounding up my talk, I want to focus on these four lineages that we excluded from the family Pinematase because they were more closely related to the Ascodesmidaceae and the Glacialaceae. We did not assign these lineages to any families or describe new families because the relationships among them are either conflicting and without support. Um, but I want to focus on uh, or talk a little bit about the Bobovia lineage here which is highly supported as a sister group to the Ascodesmidaceae, and it could be, those taxa could be included in that family. Those represent the most uh, reduced apothecial forms within the C lineage, uh, such as uh, Ascodesmis that you can see here in the photo. They just produces a bundle of acai with uh, a number of cells at the bottom or at the base. Uh, we added one new genus, uh, uh, to the Bobovia lineage, uh, and that's Kalachion. Uh, the placement of that genus has been uncertain. It's also a highly reduced species, and it's here forming a, a strongly supported monophyletic group with Crupotus. Um, it produces apothecia that are less than half a millimeter and are light colored on soil, so it's really hard to spot in the field. Um, otherwise, many of these taxa are occurring on dung. Uh, this is only the third find of this species. And um, interestingly, microscopically, it has really huge spores uh, that are highly ornamented. And as you can see, the assay have opercula. So, uh, it seems there are several options for uh, so, um, proposing new orders in the class. Uh, for the A lineage, Ascobalaceae and Pisaceae, it would be Pisaceales. For the B lineage, we could use the order Tuberales that was previously used for exclusively hybrids and truffle taxa. And for the C lineage, uh, 
we could have one or two orders, the Pioneer Metalis and the Sacrosaphalis. But with the current data, we don't have support for the A and B lineages. So we need uh, especially to fill in missing gene regions to get a complete 4-gene data set, I think, to get the bootstrap values up and also add additional critical genera of species. And I hope we will be able to accomplish this within the next couple of months. Uh, for the future, I think there's a need to sequence multiple genes, also for rarely collected enigmatic or newly described genera or species, and especially to coordinate sequencing, sequencing to utilize the same part of the gene regions. With this, I want to thank these people for use of their photographs, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.